Hi and welcome to this video on 11th grade biology. This is Preetinder Kaur and we are doing classification in um, the different species of organisms and so far we have already covered the first four kingdoms that is Monera, Protista, Fungi and the plant kingdom. So right now in this video we are going to start with classification of the animal kingdom. And before we get started, don't forget to visit the website perfect-scores.com for more such videos. And you can share and like us at facebook.com. And if you have any queries or suggestions or feedback, uh, feel free to mail us at perfectscores89 at gmail.com. So coming to the animal kingdom, which is a really vast kingdom, about um, over a million species of animals have been documented till now. How is this classification done? There are lots of uh, bases to classify the animals. So what exactly is the basis of classification in the animal kingdom? So we are going to discuss a few of them. The first one being the level of organization. So how much or to what extent uh, the organism is organized? That is the first factor people usually look at when they want to classify. Though all of the members of the king kingdom are multicellular, not each one of them exhibits the same kind of organization of cells. Uh, it differs from sponges to higher animals like lions and humans. There is division of labor among the cells. In some kinds, for example, in sedent traits, arrangement of cells is more complex. Some animals, they have a tissue level of organization, some have the organ level, for example, in platyhelminthes, while in others, you have uh, a proper system level of organization. So, organ system is there, tissue system is there. Again, it depends on how the circulatory system is there. For example, it can be open circulatory system in which blood is given out of the heart and the cells and tissues directly come in contact with that. Or it can be closed tie. For example, in humans, where blood is circulated through vessels like arteries, veins, and little capillaries. So that is the first factor. The other one is symmetry. So symmetry can also differ. Some kinds of animals, for example, sponges, they do not have any symmetry. That means any plane that passes through the center does not divide them into equal parts. While in some cases you have a radial symmetry, when you have the body divided into two identical halves through any plane that passes through the central axis. In some cases, the body can be divided into an identical left and identical right half, but only in one plane. That is called bilateral. So you can have asymmetry, or you can have radial symmetry. Or you can have bilateral, which is only in one plane. This is in any plane. This is in any one plane. Additionally, another factor is the organization. It can be diploblastic. Or it can be triploblastic. Now, in animals in which cells are arranged into two embryonic layers, that means the ectoderm and endoderm, those are called diploblastics. For example, sealant traits. But there are other animals in which differentiation is further into a third layer. That includes human beings as well. That is triploblastic. That means apart from ecto, and endoderm, there is one more layer called a mesoderm. So let's explain that to the help of diagrams. So in case of diploblastic, you will just have a central cavity. After that, you are going to have the endoderm, which is this part that I'm drawing right now. And then you have a mesoglia. And then you have the ectoderm. So this part, the zigzag where I'm just coloring zigzag, is called the ectoderm. So three different, uh, two different layers around this central cavity. This is diploblastic. What happens in triploblastic is you have the central cavity. 
then you have the endoderm then you have the mesoderm so endoderm mesoderm and then you have the ectoderm three different kinds of layers are there so that is the difference between diploblastic which is only in some animals like in coelenterates and triploblastic which is there in all the other higher forms including chordates such as human beings the next category or the next factor on which the differentiation depends is the coelom which is the central cavity coelom is basically the body cavity which is lined by the mesoderm animals that have the coelom are called coelomates so they have a coelom that is um, central cavity if you draw it it looks like this so this cavity that is filled with dots this is the coelom and this is the outer part is all the layers of cells that are present the examples of coelomates are annelids like earthworms mollusks arthropods that is the insects echinoderms hemichordates and chordates that includes us humans the second category is going to be pseudo coelomates where the body cavity is not lined by mesoderm but the mesoderm is present as different pouches so that is a central area and mesoderm is present in separate pouches and this is how the layer looks like so this empty place which is again dotted in this rough diagram now remember these are rough diagrams if you're giving exams you will probably need to draw better diagrams with cells individual cells now this is called a pseudo coelom because it's nothing but a false coelom so these animals are called pseudo coelomates the example is ascelminthes and in some kinds of organism coelom is not at all present so you just have a cavity surrounded by the layers and there is no coelom so those are known as a coelomates the example is platyhelminthes the fifth factor that uh, gives a difference in how the plant species are organized the animal species are organized is the segmentation how the body is segmented and some animals it is divided into different segments and uh, for example in humans different parts of the body have different organs but in some there is serial repetition of at least some organs for example in the earthworm there is a pattern called metamerism metameric segmentation means each segment has the same composition as the other segment that is for most of the time so that is called metamerism which is there in earthworms another factor is absence or presence of a notochord which is a rod like structure formed on the dorsal side during the embryonic development animals with the notochord are called chordates and the animals who do not have the notochord are called non chordates for example sponges So let's get started with the actual classification on animals. Now the broad classification is on the basis of this uh, these main six features that we have just discussed. So let's see how the organization is done. The kingdom that we are discussing is Animalia which as I told you before consists of all multicellular organisms. the levels of organization are two one is at a cellular level one is at a tissue or the organ or the organ system level organ system 
level. So that is the two kinds of uh, variations. These ones are further divided into two based on their symmetry. They can be either having radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry. I hope you remember what was radial. Radial means through any axis it can be divided into two equal halves and bilateral means only through one particular axis. Now further the bilateral are divided into three. Into acelomates that basically do not have a body cavity. Ones with a false coelom called pseudocelomates. And finally, with a true coelom, that is coelomates. Now, this is on the basis of body cavity. On the basis of cellular level, cellular level, we have one particular phylum, which is Porifera. Only one. On the basis of radial, you have two phylums. One is Coelentrata. which is also known as Nidaria and the other one is Tenophora or Tenophora. On the basis of without body cavity, the acelomates, they are having one phylum, Platyhelminthes. On the basis of pseudocelomate, you have one that is Eschelminthes. And on the basis of coelomates, you have six more phylums. So I'm going to write in really short over here. It's going to be Annelida. It's going to be Arthropoda. Mollusca. Echinodermata as well. So I'm going to write in short. Echinodermata, hemichordata and chordata. Alright, so let's just revise once again. On the basis of levels of organization, you can divide them into cellular. And cellular only consists of one phylum that is porifera. On the basis of levels. On the basis of symmetry, you can divide them into radial which is Coelentrata, Nidarians, and Tenophora, or you can divide them into bilateral, which is further divided according to body cavity into acelomates, that is Platyhelminthes, pseudocelomates, that is Eschelminthes, and coelomates, that has six further phylums: Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemichordata, and Chordata. So let's suppose you have to give the example of human beings. What are human beings? We come under chordata. So we are under the kingdom of animalia. We have a tissue, organ, organ system level of organization. We have bilateral symmetry. And we do have a body cavity that is proper and true. That is why we are coelomates. We are bilateral and we have an organ system. And we are obviously multicellular or animals. So that is basically how the division is done. It's best if you can copy this kind of chart and maintain it somewhere or draw it once and keep understanding how we are developing into different categories one by one. The next thing that we have to do is discuss uh, the features of the different phylums. So we'll be starting with Porifera right now. So coming to Phylum Porifera. That is the first phylum that we have to do. The members of this particular phylum are commonly known as sponges. They are marine and usually asymmetrical. So I'm going to list down their features here. Marine, asymmetrical. And they are primitive multicellular organisms and they have a cellular level of organization. They have a water system. Uh, or a water transport or a canal system. Water enters through ostia, which are minute pores, and they go into a central cavity called spongioseal.
and from this it goes out through the osculum. So it comes through ostea, enters the sponge seal and goes out through the osculum. And this is helpful in gathering food, in respiratory functions and also to remove waste. Then there are some collar cells that are also known as coenocytes. What these collar cells do is they line the sponge seal and the canals. Digestion in this case is intracellular, that means within each cell. And the body is supported by a skeleton made up of spicules or spongin fibers. Okay, so skeleton made up of spicule or spongin fibers. Sexes are not separate, so it's a hermaphrodite. That means the eggs and the sperms are produced by the same individual. The reproduction is sexual, asexual reproduction, that is through fragmentation. And if it is sexual reproduction, that is through the reproduction by gametes. Fertilization in case of porphyrins is going to be internal. And development is indirect. It has a larval stage which is very different from the adult in terms of morphology, shape, structure and form. Common examples of kingdom uh, of phylum porifera include Sycon, Spongula which is a freshwater sponge and Euspongia which is the bath sponge that is used commonly. So these are the examples and just quickly let's revise through phylum porifera. They are marine, asymmetrical, have a canal system. Ostia is uh, through which the water enters into the sponge seal and goes out through the osculum. Collar cells are there called coenocytes and digestion is intracellular. The skeleton is made up of spicules or spongin fibers. They are hermaphrodites that means uh, the sexes are not separate. Asexual reproduction is through fragmentation and sexual reproduction is through gametes. Fertilization is internal and there is a larval stage which is different from the adult stage. And examples are Sycon, Spongula and Euspongia. So that is all for phylum porifera and uh, the next phylum that we are going to do is phylum cylindrata or Nidaria that we will do in the next video. So thank you so much for watching this video and keep revising how the animal kingdom is classified and what were the six main factors. So thank you so much for watching this one.